Okay, the next several sections we're going to look at uh, the cell. Everything is made up of cells. Go back to what we talked about with um, atoms and molecules making up organelles and organelles make up cells. And enough cells put together make up tissue. Enough tissue makes up an organ. And then enough organs put together is organ system. And then eventually the organism. So our body is filled with billions and billions of cells. I do understand that the model we're getting ready to look at is just an all-encompassing model. So not every cell looks exactly like this. What they did is they took uh, all the different cells in the body and grabbed each different component and compiled into one model and basically said, these are all the different things that we find in all the different cells in our body. And we're going to look at a lot of these throughout the next uh, many slides. Organelles, which translates to little organ, are specialized structures inside the cell. So let's go back to this slide. All of these inside of the cell are considered the organelles. It's all these components that help the cell work. The nucleus, as an example, is an organelle that contains the, ge the genetic material. The cytoplasm is the living material that surrounds the nucleus. Uh, so let's go back to this picture. The cytoplasm, as you can see here, is all the fluid that's filled within the cell called the cytoplasm. Okay, here's a test question. So anytime you see the word function, just know that that's going to be a test question. I really like structure and function questions. So the cell, these are the basic units of life. They have many different functions depending on the particular cells that we look at. Your immune cells, your goblet cells, your mucus cells, your, mu your reproductive cells, and so on. But they do offer protection and support, movement, uh, communication. Cell metabolism is responsible for releasing energy that occurs in the mitochondria. Uh, different chemical reactions are necessary to take place within the cells. Inheritance, so each cell has a copy of its genetic information and specialized cells such as sperm, the oocytes, uh, they pass on this genetic material. Okay, the cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane, is the outermost component of the cell. It um, also has the, a name called the phospholipid bilayer. So know those three, cell membrane, plasma membrane, and phospholipid bilayer. It does enclose the cytoplasm, so as a result we have uh, intracellular, which means inside the cell, and extracellular, which means outside the cell. Now this is an important concept because the cell does need to protect itself by only allowing certain things in. And we're gonna look later at the different ways things can get inside the cell, which means overall it is a selective barrier. It determines what moves in and out of itself. Okay, here's a picture of what that phospholipid bilayer looks like or the cell membrane. So here we have those phospholipids and you can see the polar and nonpolar ends, the hydrophilic, hydrophobic. And so the nonpolar regions uh, are here and the polar regions are um, right there. Okay. Um, other parts that help make up the cell, you do find cholesterol. So there are some cholesterol 
uh, strands. So there's one there. There's one that's embedded within the cell. Um, carbohydrates are found within the cell. Water ions. Okay, the cell uh, membrane and its phospholipids have that orientation because of their uh, hydrophobic end and hydrophilic end. Okay, so that's what gives it its unique orientation. And then you're going to see membrane channels and receptor molecules uh, embedded within the membrane. Very important structures because this aids in what gets in and out of the cell and cell communication. Okay, proteins um, are an extremely important structure that help give the cell its integrity. Um, also, it forms the membrane channels, carrier molecules, receptor molecules, enzyme structural support. Uh, so, to go down a slight rabbit trail, um, this can taper into functional medicine, which has to do with diet and lifestyle, and how you know, what foods you're eating. Are you eating um, good proteins, lean meats? Are you eating proteins at all? Uh, is your body able to actually break down the proteins and is your body able to actually utilize the amino acids once they're broken down? Because in the end, the cells will take those amino acids and manufacture a protein like membrane channels, carrier molecules, receptor molecules, enzymes, and also aids in other structural support. To go on with proteins, um, it helps build your immune system. It does growth and repair, like to your muscles and skin and hair and fingernails and so on. So proteins, very important. Uh, diet and lifestyle, very important. And gastrointestinal function, very important to maintain healthy proteins and healthy cells. Okay, there's different ways that things move through a cell. Uh, one is passive transport. So this one does not require energy. Good examples are diffusion and osmosis. These are things that just can go across the membrane. Active transport does require energy. Um, this is part of your metabolism. And it does take pumps to do this, like your sodium potassium pump or transport vesicles. Okay, diffusion is movement of a solute from a higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. So this symbol here uh, is my shorthand for concentration. Okay, an example, if you squirt perfume in a room, eventually the entire room fills up with that smell. That would be diffusion. Uh, in this example, they're dropping salt in distilled water it's disassociated and just diffuses throughout the entire uh, beaker here. Nothing to stop it. No walls, no filters, no membranes to go through, just free rain. Diffuses evenly across all the water. Chaosmosis is a little bit different. It is similar to diffusion, but one distinct thing is it is diffusion across a selectively permeable membrane. So it does go from higher concentration to lower concentration. Uh, in other words, there's movement toward the more concentrated solution. So in this example over here, they have salt solution with a selectively permeable membrane. They stick it in water. The salt cannot leave, so the water goes through the pores in the membrane and ends up um, diffusing through osmosis. Okay, with selective permeability, this is what only allows some substances to pass in or out. This is a very important function to our cells because it's one of the things that keeps us alive. Because you can't just have anything get into the cell, so it is selectively permeable. 
Uh, nutrients must enter and waste must exit. Uh, it is important to get rid of byproducts, otherwise you get toxic buildup. And the cell must, can, can, uh, must maintain a proper concentration of molecules. Okay, if it doesn't, it can lead to cell death. 